hi, have you met me? I'm Conrad Fisher. I write a bunch of books. I teach a bunch of classes. I've often been a residency program director and occasionally a professor demeritus. But here, we're welcoming you to the beginning of your education. What do you mean the beginning? This is the book is alphabetical, so this is like near the end. No, it's the beginning. It's the beginning because when you're finished with this section and you finish step two, let's remember that the overall match rate for U.S. grads is 93%. Then you scramble and the ultimate match rate is 99.9%. For international graduates, the match rate is 60%. But if you have a 240, it's 70%. And if you have a 250, it's 90%. So it's the beginning. It's the beginning. It's the beginning. That's why graduations are called commencement, because we commence. We commence if we learn these few things. Polyarteritis nodosa, good pasture syndrome. Polyarteritis nodosa, GPA, eosinophilic GPA, which doesn't cause kidney problems. All of them. Because they're all of vasculitis or damage of your kidney. And everything that has vasculitis causes fever because it's an inflammation. And everything that causes vasculitis gives you tiredness. What's the difference between tiredness and fatigue? And the answer is fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year of tuition in American medical school and weight loss. Which of them causes you to have joint pain? Well, synovial lining is extraordinarily vascular. So all vasculitides, polyarteritis sedosa, GPA, eosinophilic GPA, microscopic polyangiitis, any sort of vasculitis that's idiopathic gives you joint pain. And because the blood vessels are inflamed, they clog up or bleed, clog up or bleed and cause a stroke. Mononeuritis multiplex, is it mono, one, or is it multi? Which one, make up your mind, is it one or is it multiple? Are you having Neuropathy at a movie theater, at a multiplex? That means that you're having inflammation and damage of nerves, peripheral nerves large enough to have names. It's an ulnar and a perineal. It's a radial and another nerve large enough to have a name because you're inflaming the vasonervorum. And what is a kidney? Well, that's a lot of things you can say there. But a kidney in many ways is a big, high pressure vascular tuft. The pulmonary artery, pulmonary hypertension, is a pulmonary pressure above 20 millimeters of mercury. 20, 20 millimeters of mercury, and it's pulmonary hypertension. But the renal artery, the afferent arteriole, arteriole, the afferent arteriole routinely bears a pressure of 45 millimeters of mercury. So kidney's tough little bugger, isn't it? It sure is. Because the glomerulus is a tuft of blood vessels and the whole kidney is an even bigger tuft of a tuft with a capsule. That's why the kidney capsule is to resilient so your kidneys don't explode. Well, why you have a stroke in early age? Because you have inflammation of blood vessels in your brain and they get clogged up and they damage and they also can break the same as in your kidney and the same, in, but it's when it's in your kidney, it's called glomerulonephritis and it's when your bowel, it's called GI bleeding. And when it's on your skin, it's called petechiae and purpura. And what's the difference between petechiae and purpura? The size, because right now, I'm going to little petechiae, but someday when I grow up, I'll be a big purpura. Non-blanching. These are all the same idea. And if you see them as separate, you will have a harder time memorizing things because it's so much, it feels so much. But if we can make it small and say, each of these ideas, blood vessels damaged inside your brain causing stroke, clogging up or bleeding, inside the blood vessels of your nerves, inside the blood vessels of your glomerulus, inside the blood vessels of your gut and your skin, you say, oh, it's kind of all the same thing, isn't it? Inflamed blood vessels everywhere? Call it normal anemia chronic disease, normal chronic, normal acidic anemia, but it's anemia of inflammation. Hepcidin increases from your liver and your ferroportin gets damaged. Well, if your hepcidin goes up, your ferroportin goes down, you can't port iron around your body. And as a bystander, as they say, collateral damage, non-specific measures of inflammation, I'm a decades saying, 
which one's better, sed rate or C-reactive protein? And you know, it's like, a, it's like people who are sports fans. Well, I'm a fan of this team. Well, I'm a fan of that team. I live in New York. Well, I like the Yankees. I like the Mets. Well, one person says sed rate is better. Another person says C-reactive protein. And I'm like, so I usually do this. This is what you should do them. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Ah, gotta go. Now, what's different about poly... Oh, wait. That means all the vasculitides have these things in common? Whether it's GPA, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, say today. Such a long word I say, I'm such a hard time I say. Eosinophilic GPA and microscopic polyangiitis and polyarteritis nodosa and other vasculitides. Hanox Schonline purpura, sort of. Hanox Schonline purpura is GI, GI joint, skin, and renal, GI joint, skin, and renal, Hanox Schonline purpura. Yeah, that's actually the point. The point to what I'm doing with you and why you've come to see me is that you don't know, need to come to see us just to have a bunch of knowledge thrown at your face. You need to come to see us so we can have this miniaturized so people don't waste your time. I don't like having my time wasted and I don't like people having your time wasted. So now let's get down to the easy part of it. Everything that I just said about polyarteritis acidosis is the same except it spares the lung. Why don't people just go that? Everywhere in the whole body except spares the lung. I don't know. What else is different about it? It's associated with hepatitis B and C. That's because hepatitis B and C are inflammatory, can provoke the inflammatory system. And as we know, a number of cancers are also inflammatory. Right? That's why Helicobacter pylori causes stomach cancer and papillomavirus causes anal and cervical cancer. And epstein Barr is associated with lymphoma because there's certain virus that are just carcinogenic, right dudes? Human herpes virus 8 causes Kaposi's sarcoma because there's certain viruses that are carcinogenic. Oncoviruses, as they say. What else is different about it? GI symptoms are the most prominent. Hey, you know, we don't, can't uh, biopsy the lung. We don't, can't biopsy the lung because it spares the lung. And I don't like biopsying kidneys. When you biopsy livers and kidneys, you get bleeding. I saw a good dude last week. It's like his hemoglobin went from 12 to 10 to 8. We scanned his belly. There's the blood. They deliver biopsy. He poured four units of blood into his abdomen. So what's different? GI symptoms are most prominent. And so therefore we can do a GI angiogram. What else is different? They all have mononeuritis multiplex. Multiple nerves largely have, have names. They all can have ulnar and a perineal lateral femoral. Yeah, we just said that. The most accurate test for all of them is a biopsy. All of them biopsy. And yes, it depends what you biopsy, but the most accurate is a biopsy. And you got a biopsy for most vasculitides because we may end up using cyclophosphamide in some. Rituximab, cyclophosphamide. Rituximab, cyclophosphamide. So in polyarteritis nodosa, what's different? And the answer is looking at a GI angiogram. Why? Because it affects the GI tract. Why? Because I don't want to biopsy a kidney. It hurts and it bleeds. What's different about polyarteritis sedosa, spares lung? What's different about a GI symptoms most often so we can get an angiogram? What's different about it? Hepatitis B and C association. So you should test for that. The angiogram can show dilation and beating of that vascular tract. Why are you telling me about that again? Isn't that all of them? <gasps> yes, P. Anka and C. Anka for polyarteritis sedosa. Uh, Anka testing, well, we used to call it Anka. Now it's myeloproxidase antibodies. <gasps> I'm different. I'm different. I changed my name. I'm different. I changed my name. I'm getting rid of you, Conrad. I'm divorcing you. I don't like being with you anymore. I'm unhappy. <gasps> call me myeloproxidase. It'll change who I am. You're not any different. You just changed your name to myeloproxidase from Inca. Maybe it'll make you feel better? Give you something to do? That's the point here. Changing it from P-Anca to myeloproxidase or C-Anca to antiproteinase 3 doesn't change anything. It's just a different name. Hey, which of the vasculitides have red cells? It's a vasculitis, so all of them. But yeah, but which one has proteinuria? Which vasculitis has proteinuria? They all have glomerular problems, so all of them. Well, which one gives you red cell cast, huh? Uh, all of them? Why do you keep saying the same thing over and over for every vasculitis? 
uh, to make you think I know more than I actually know. Which of them gets steroids? All of them. All the vasculitides get steroids? Yeah. Which one are treated with cyclophosphamide? No, all of them. But sometimes we use rituximab. Aha, finally. What's different? Treating the hepatitis B and C. Now, polymyalgia rheumatica is a type of vasculitis, but what's different about it is it's mild. It goes away. It has an instant response to low-dose steroids. It feels like a vasculitis sort of wannabe. It's sort of a wimpy vasculitis. I make you tired. I make it so you can't get out of a chair. If you hold your arm together, can you stand up? Oh, you can't stand up? Okay, well, all right. Well, you know, you're supposed to be able uh, here to go into chair. Hey, Macarena, hold your arms together. Can you stand up? You don't have polymyalgia rheumatica. That's your big test, Mr. Professor? Actually, yes. Because this seemingly simple event called I'm in the chair and I can stand up, psoas muscles engaging, rectus muscles engaging, quadriceps engaging, limb girdle muscles engaging. It's actually quite a complex maneuver of multiple large muscles. And a person with polymyalgia rheumatica can't do that. And most vasculitides can't do that. But you see, the other vasculitides have skin and nerve and eye and lung and kidney, which is not here. And that's the difference. Thank you, Captain's Chair, for my fellowship. And so when you want to exclude polymyalgia, you can get a SED rate, because it's true, 99% of the people should have a high SED rate. Difficulty combing hair. Oh, because you can't lift your arm up. No, we have to do a nuclear shoulder scan. We have to do a technetium hair scan. We can't just say, can you comb your hair and get up from a chair? Comb your hair and get up from a chair. He can't comb his hair, get up from a chair. He must have a disease. They all have the anemia of chronic disease if it lasts long enough. But here's the other thing, polymyalgia, algia, algia, pain but not muscle destruction. Polymyositis, high CPK and elderless. But here's the big issue. That thing about getting up a chair with the arms crossed, try that because 20 years from now, you're gonna be with a patient who's gonna have a problem and he's gonna be like the guy I saw once. He's gonna be, oh, Dr. Fisher, I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm a very healthy man, you know, on Nordic track every day, but I'm dying, no, I can't even sleep. I can't get up from my bed. And the answer is he had polymyalgia rheumatica. I saw him at 10 o'clock in the morning. He got steroids. And by 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon, he felt cured. Aldolase and CPK, normal, brilliant response to steroids. Hold your arms together and try and get up from a chair. Now, giant cell arteritis, uh, it's always hard for me when we talk about these as being in the same class as polymyalgia rheumatica because, you know, you don't go blind from polymyalgia rheumatica. You don't have a stroke from polymyalgia rheumatica. There's, by definition, no blood tests that are abnormal except the SED rate in polymyalgia rheumatica. Uh, you get jaw claudication, jaw claudication because like peripheral arteriosis of your head. Peripheral arteriosis, I get pain in my calves when I'm walking. You know, I'm walking, I'm walking with my mouth. Ah, ah. Hurts me when I do that, walking on your mouth. And the scalp is tender. There's another one where it hurts when I touch my scalp. What makes you touch your scalp? I'm combing my hair. And when you have tenderness. And so just like polymyalgia rheumatica, sed rate and C-reactive protein is up, but unlike polymyalgia rheumatica is that you do a biopsy. And when you biopsy one side and it doesn't work, and you biopsy one side and you don't find anything, you biopsy the other side and with prednisone. And here's the difference between this and many other vasculitides. You don't need your temporal artery, so you can biopsy one side. And if the other, that doesn't work, you biopsy the other side. Thank you very much much. The other thing is giant cell arteritis, temporal arteritis, gives you big aneurysms and you can die. You give steroids right away because the blindness is not reversible. <laughs> so figure this out. 
How do you get off steroids? Oh, I get off steroids and it recurs. I get off steroids and it recurs. I don't want to get off steroids because I'm going to go blind. It works for rheumatoid arthritis, tocilizumab. And it works for COVID if you're severe COVID. We can't say Wegener's... Sorry, I just said it. Granulomatosis. We don't like to name things after people. And then after 70 years, somebody decides, oh, by the way, we just figured out he is a Nazi. You just figured that out now? Okay. All right, we won't say that. So upper and lower, what's different? Upper respiratory, otitis, sinusitis, than everything else I just said. So why don't you just tell me what's... Dr. Fisher, why don't you just tell me what's different? Actually, this is the point. See, this section of vasculitis is why I became a USMLE teacher. Because I really didn't like a medical school when they made me memorize all this stuff. And like, you could have just said to me, polyarteritis nodosa, no lung, hep B and C, GI angiogram. GPA, you could have just said to me, upper respiratory findings. Other than that, everything else is the same. The skin, the eye, and the joint is the same. Now, the ANCA test, which is to say proteinase 3 antibody, is more accurate in, in uh, GPA than other things. But you still have the biopsy. If it's still biopsy because you're giving, uh, going to give, might give rituximab and cyclophosphamide. So the C ANCA or proteinase 3, whatever you decide to, my name is proteinase 3. P ANCA. I stopped saying P ANCA. I meant to say myeloproxidase antibodies more microscopic polyangiitis, and Cherg stress. Don't say Cherg stress. You meant to say eosinophilic GPA. Yeah, the ANCA testing is more accurate with the others, but still not good enough to spare you a biopsy. But when the question decides to change the name of the test a third time, Third time, and instead of changing it again from C anchor to proteinase 3 and P anchor to myeloproxase antibody, and now we call it qualitative serum autoantibody. Does you feel proud of yourself to change the names of things just to confuse the rest of us? Who does Dante place in the lowest rung of heaven, of hell? Who does Dante in the inferno? Dante Alighieri in the lowest rung of heaven. Seven layers, seven levels. Who is in the lowest rung of heaven? Well, the answer to that question is those who remain undecided and neutral in the face of oppression. Because in oppression, neutrality favors the oppressor. For sure. And in the face of oppression, and big people beating on small people. I'm stronger than you, so I could take what you have. Neutrality favors the oppressor. oppressor. But just slightly above that, probably a number six, is the people who keep changing the name of these autoantibodies. Okay. If Dante were alive now, that's who he'd put on the sixth rung of hell. So why is a lung biopsy better than a kidney biopsy? Because lungs have lower pressure, and kidney biopsies have higher pressure, and they bleed more often. <coughs> Sinus biopsies don't work out so well because you can't get a good piece of tissue, and it often ends up being obscured, and you get false negatives. So sinus biopsies just don't reliably show these granulomas. And then all three in the choice can choose the lung biopsy. So C anchor and P anchor are just not good enough. They're suggested. Now, <coughs> prednisone and rituximab is for most of them because they, they are, it's a better term is cyclophosphamide. Rituximab, yeah, rituximab might have some effect on reactivating hepatitis B, but hepatitis B is a very rare disease and very quickly about one half of 1% and going to be even rarer, rarer, and rarer disease. But rituximab is more gentle than cyclophosphamide doesn't cause eosinophilic problems, doesn't cause you to have a, 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 a cystitis like cyclophosphamide do. And for GPA, microscopic polyangiitis, the clue to the test is that uh, a person come, a clue to the tr a diagnosis is that you person comes in with a pneumonia, because remember that uh, GPA and microscopic polyangiitis look like pneumonia. When people come in and they have, <coughs> like I am coughing, and they have a cough and abnormal x-ray, 
the first thing, and remember, vasculitis can get fever, right? So since it looks like a pneumonia and you get the first thing you're going to mind is, my God, you have a cough. You have a cough? Yes, you have a cough. Okay. Oh my goodness, you must have you must have vasculitis. Well, that's not the first thing I think of when I have a cough and fever. I think of a pneumonia. And I gave you antibiotics and didn't get any better. Eosinophilic GPA, and the major issue is asthma and eosinophils. There you go. Well, how do you answer the question of what's the most likely diagnosis? What is the best initial test? Pianka. Stop saying that. Proteinase 3 antibody. Because they all have these other same systematic findings, right? And they all the most accurate test for all of them is a biopsy. And yes, prednisone and cyclophosphamide, prednisone and rituximab. Are we really taking this very complicated thing called vasculitis and reducing it down to a couple of words for each disease? Yes. That actually is what we're doing. Now, the interleukin inhibitor, oh, what's different? Where are we really taking a complicated disease like eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis? Are we really taking Church Strauss, which has 17 syllables in the new name and reducing it to three words? Yeah, we are. Asthma, eosinophils, the interleukin inhibitors that you used for asthma with, that had phenol increase in the fractional excretion of nitric oxide. The whole disease is reduced to three words, eosinophils, asthma, and interleukin inhibitors that stop eosinophils. And this thing about what asthma med causes eosinophilic GPA was in the pulmonary section. And that is Zephyr Lucast. Ooh, wow. Adverse effect of cyclophosphamide, people know, because cyclophosphamide is a very old drug. As an old drug, people know, know the adverse effects. Hey, what's that medication, the antibiotic, the antibiotic that causes gray baby syndrome and aplastic anemia? Gray baby syndrome and aplastic anemia, that antibiotic. Oh, chloramphenicol. Oh, you know about that. You know, I used chloramphenicol once in 1993. And I think I did it just to say I'd done it. I haven't used it since. So the moral story is our heads don't know about newer things because medical school tends to teach things in the order in which they're invented. And the hemorrhagic cystitis is prevented by joining Mensa. Mesna. Mensa is a genius organization. Mesna prevents the hemorrhagic cystitis and cyclophosphamide causes bladder cancer because cyclophosphamide has toxicities. Now, microscopic polyangiitis did not exist as a disease decades ago because there was GPA, eosinophilic GPA, polyarteritis, the dose as the vasculitis. And now we said, well, sometimes there's no eosinophils and no asthma. Well, it must be Wegener's. Well, sometimes there's no granulomas and it didn't have Cianca. Well, if, and sometimes there's no upper respiratory. Well, if there's no upper respiratory and proteinase 3 anchor, if there's no eosinophils and asthma, it must be a separate, and no granulomas. Is it a separate disease? Yeah. It's called microscopic polyangiitis. Microscopic polyangiitis is just like every other vasculitis we just said. Should I repeat everything I just said? No. Look at the beginning of the book again. But no granulomas, no eosinophils, no asthma, no upper respiratory finding. No eosinophils, no asthma, uh, uh, asthma, no granulomas, no upper respiratory findings. Now it's microscopic polyangiitis. Oh my God, it's a different disease. No, it's a variant of the same thing. Steroids and cyclophosphamide, steroids and rituximab, steroids and I give the mess now. Mm -mm. Prevent the hemorrhagic, bleep your bladder. No one likes your peeing blood. Ba -do 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 -do. Can you hold your arms together? Get up from a seated chair. You don't have polymyalgia rheumatica. Ba -do. Person has GI bleeding, pain, purple, that's all. Then we get on with it, Fisher! 
You're boring. You always say the same thing. That's the point. Vasculitis suffers from having too many variations that people don't realize. That's all of them. But what's different, no ankas? What's different associated with IgA? What's different, predominantly kidney? What's different about Hinox Shawnline purpura? IgA spread crazy, but it's IgA nephropathy. No, it's IgA nephropathy spread. It is IgA, or it's spread to the other organs. I've come to eat your skin, your GI tract, oh, your joints, GI, joint, skin. But unlike that other vasculitic shit, I get better. And if I don't, I give steroids. Do steroids work? Mm, it's what we do. Hey, next online purple, what reverses it? Nothing. Nothing reverses any IGA. You can't give steroids for celiac disease, that's IGA. Celiac disease is IGA. IGA deficient steroids don't work, even with the anaphylaxis. Mm, so you mean if you have progressive renal insufficiency, we use steroids? Yeah. Might it work? Maybe. I don't know. Don't people buy the Mega Millions lotteries? You know those Mega Millions win, you know, $400 million and $300 million and $200 million? Do you know what the chance of winning is? If you buy 10 tickets a day. If you buy 10 tickets every day, you have a chance of winning once every 400,000 years. Buy a ticket! Buy a ticket! The steroids may work. Use the ACE inhibitors to delay progression. Now, I'm not doing that. What are you using your money for? The lottery tickets. Haram, haram. Well, what's different about cryoglobins? Cryoglobins uh, is the first thing is not to mix up with cold agglutinins. Cold agglutinins causes hemolysis. Cold agglutinins associate with Epstein Barr. Cold agglutinins associate with Epstein Barr and mycoplasma. That's the first thing. Not to mix up with cold agglutinins, which is hemolysis. Hemolysis. Cryoglobins associate with hepatitis B and C. And when it is, the main thing is treat the hepatitis B and C. The other thing is cryoglobins is a type of a rheumatoid factor associated with IgMs elsewhere. The other thing about cryoglobins uh, is that steroids don't reliably work. Steroids is, uh, remember, room, it's cryoglobin is a rheumatoid factor. The vasculitic phenomena that can be in hanox line purpura, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, microscopic polyangiitis, eosinophilic GPA, GPA. Showing you some gnarly legs there. Well, the thing is, is that cryoglobins uh, steroids don't reliably work because steroids don't work really well for IgMs, but sometimes it's called essential mixed cryoglobins. And if it says mixed, what are you mixed with? Uh, tonic water? Oh, uh, Red Bull. What are you mixed with? IgGs. And if it's mixed, it's not a cosmopolitan. It's mixed with IgGs, which means steroids might work if it's mixed. Estrogen hepatitis C it doesn't work. Steroids don't work well. So SLE. I gotta give them some easy way to remember this. Yeah, there's no easy way to remember. This is like bullshit. It's not bullshit, people. That's why people become rheumatologists. Well, why don't you sound intelligent and professorial? Yeah, you. Yeah. SLE. SLE. Okay, I'm gonna do it just for you. <clears throat> uh, children, SLE has three letters. So it gives you a deficiency in C3. Uh, hepatitis C, if you see that, has four letters and gives you a decrease in C4. Three letters complement three. Four letters complement C4. This is Conrad Fisher for this professorial moment. Your cryoglobins clog up your glomeruli and infarct your digit. You're fucking, I'm going to fuck you with my digits. Let's not say that. Can you edit that out? What? Or, I don't know. I, these days when I'm socially inappropriate, I don't know whether to edit it out or promote it. We used to be vices have now become habits. So crying, but this is the same thing we said before about vasculitis. 
skin infarction, GI joint, skin, renal. So, Betty, I can't get rid of the IgMs very well. So I get rid of the CD20 cells that make the IgMs. You're gonna hear that a lot through the rest of this course. I can't get rid of immunoglobulins. Oh, that's making you sad. I get rid of the cells that make the immunoglobulins. I get rid of the cells that make immunoglobulins. Remember, cold gluten is hemolysis that's associated with mycoplasma. And here, yes, you get rid of the CD20 cells that make those uh, make those antibodies. Or sutimlimab. Hey, chief, hey, chief, you got to put sutimlimab in the course. Uh, Ed, look, uh, dude, I, I know that your pharmacology question bank, there's nobody better. Your pharmacology question bank is the best of the best of the best. It's got everything. Uh, people can read that. You can answer everything in step one, step two, step three, internal medicine boards. I get that. But are you, are you sure that's not too advanced? No, hey, chief, this is a unique drug in class. It's never existed before. Why do you sound like you're from Brooklyn? I'm from the Brooklyn part of Egypt, chief. So Timlimab, thank you, Ed. But it is, it's true, it's true. There's never been a C1 inhibitor, so Timlimab. I don't wanna learn more names of things. No, what you wanna do is you wanna learn new treatments so that maybe you're the first kid on your block to know about it. How about that? People watch sporting competitions all over the world. Does anybody get their breast cancer cured because of that? Do you get your disease cured? And you think it's always because some subspecialist will know. And all day long, we spend telling subspecialists, how about this drug? Oh, I never used that before. Sutimlimab inhibits the complement system. We have Ecolizumab that stops C5. Sutimlimab for C1. Oh, another evil eye. You've got pussy material in your eye. Oh, I do. Pussy material and you die. Oh, I do. How come we say purulent? Have you ever sold out pussy? Now you know why we have purulent. And that's why. So, Bechet was a Turkish dermatologist. Bechet has no blood test. Bechet has pathurgy. You scrape the skin and there's a reaction. Bechet, how do you not mix this up with reactive arthritis? Because it's different types of manifestation. Reactive arthritis doesn't cause aneurysms. Reactive arthritis may cause some conjunctivitis and, uh, or uh, corneal problems, but reactive arthritis, uh, Reiter syndrome does not cause you to go blind. Okay. This causes you to go blind with uveitis and blindness. Reactive arthritis may give a joint here and there, but reactive arthritis goes away. Reactive arthritis, Reiter syndrome, doesn't give you C and S lesions. Circinate balanitis. I can't bear to look at that. Reactive arthritis give you C, I, knee, knee joint, P, urinary problems. But it's not going to make you go blind. It's not going to give you circinate, meaning around the head of the penis, like this does. The most dangerous thing is that Bechet's is a type of... What section are we in? Vasculitis. Bechet's give vasculitis. Pulmonary artery aneurysm, coronary artery aneurysm, cerebral stuff. Pathergy, we scrape, scrape, scrape the skin. Scrape, scrape, scrape the skin. They're pustules, but they're not infected. Pustules, but they're not infected. Pustules, but they're not infected. So I wish we had a blood test, but we don't have any characteristic blood test. It's a clinical syndrome with the pathogen. We treat with steroids, and sometimes they get you off of steroids. Here was one of the few indications for colchicine. Colchicine and Bechet's disease. Bechet, Turkish dermatologist. Azathioprine. And here we go for things. Why is it going in the vasculitis section? Wait, wait. Why do you think it's going in the vasculitis section? Eye problems, pulmonary artery, aneurysm, cerebral aneurysm, the skin stuff that looks like inflammatory vascular material. And we give anti-inflammatories. You'll never be asked in a million years which of those to choose. And then, now here's something unique, a premilast, which we used in dermatology. A premilast, which we used last in dermatology as a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Crisabarol, 
a premolast, chrysabarol, a premolast. Go into German, look it up. Takayasu's arteritis are pulseless disease, the type of vasculitis. And it is very, very, very ethnically and geographically inoculated. It is in young Asian women in Asia. Uh, the most common wrong answer is to say a biopsy. The most common, the most common wrong answer. Uh, because you can't, why, you biopsy temporal arteritis, you biopsy in uh, GPA, you biopsy in eosinophilic GPA, you biopsy in polyarteritis and those, okay, all right, fine, you tried to do an angiogram, you did all the thing, polyarteritis and those, uh, to avoid it. You tried to avoid me. You tried to avoid the biopsy. But still, at the end, you biopsy. But I'm not doing that here. Why can't you just biopsy here? All right, I'll have it your way. Hi, ma'am, I'm sorry uh, that you're having this problem with your pulseless disease. Uh, you see how your subclavian has a problem in it? I'm going to cut a slice out of your subclavian artery. Ooh. You see, temporal arteritis you can biopsy because you don't need your temporal artery. Um, and when you biopsy other things, like you biopsy the kidney or lung and GPA, you're not slicing a hole in somebody's pulmonary artery. Here, if this was a subclavian, you can't slice a... Can I take a slice out of your subclavian? No. How about never? Does never work for you? So then steroids and all the other immunosuppressives that we use to get you off of steroids. Steroids and all... Oh, but that's like giant cell arteritis. That's like giant cell arteritis. I-L sick. Prevent you from having sick. So what we're trying to do here at vasculitis, and if you're going in sequence, we're nearing the end of the book, if you're going in sequence. If you're going in sequence. If you're not going in sequence, anybody can give you a ton of information. Go to up to date, or go to thousands of pages of material. We're in information age. And that doesn't help you that much because we need to condense it. So you see, to be able to take all vasculitides and say all vasculitides can give you a fever and a high sed rate and weight loss and normocytic anemia if it's chronic, meaning lasting for more than two months. All vasculitides can give you a stroke, GI bleeding because the vasculature is damaged petechiae and purpura because the vasculature of your skin becomes damaged. Kidney disease in many because kidneys are extremely vascular tufts of blood vessels. Now let's just say what's different. Takiasus make you lose pulse. Giant cell arteritis is particularly here in the temporal arteries and you biopsy temporal arteries more than once. IgA nephropathy, when it gets systemic and becomes Hanox Shan line purpura, may respond to steroids. Just tell me, polyarteritis nodosa spares the lungs, and GPA hits the upper respiratory system, and Churg stress or eosinophilic GPA gives you eosinophils and asthma and can be treated with interleukin drugs that inhibit eosinophils. And if you just say, well, tell me what's different and unique. Doesn't that make it small and more manageable to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in one hour? Never been more truer than right now.